I'm going to be surviving the next 100 days in a zombie apocalypse. Do I have what it takes to fight the zombies and other survivors? Watch to the end to find out. On day one, I spawned in as a normal dude. Huh, where am I? What's going on? Why do I look like this? Suddenly, I was attacked by zombies. I had no weapons or armor, so I had to run away. Cut me some slack here. It's day one. Luckily, the sun came up and the zombies burned to death. Ha-ha, <laughs> take that, power of the sun. I better get moving. The woods seem like a good place to start. As I ventured deep into the woods, I saw Steve, who was fighting the zombies that didn't die from the sunlight. And stay dead. <laughs> I'm good at this. Huh, he's not bad at all. Maybe he knows what's going on. Hey, Steve, nice kills there. What's up with this place anyways? Hello, traveler. People are turning into zombies left and right, like some sort of infection going around. So like a zombie apocalypse? Exactly. Steve offered to take me to a military base, and I didn't hesitate to take his offer. After you. Hmm, which way was that again? Oh yeah, this way. On day two, Steve and I made a stop to chop down some trees. Okay, we need to make some tools if we're gonna survive this apocalypse. Sounds good, let's get to work. We gathered up some stone and then started mining up for some coal as well. After gathering the elements to build our tools, we left the woods and entered a desert. Oh look, some husks in the distance. Zombie husks, we're gonna have to kill them. Steve and I killed all the husks and after we needed to find a place to stay before it got too late. Let's go to the mountains. Good plan. We managed to make it to the mountains, but it was getting late and the zombies were gonna start showing up in no time. All right, let's build some shelter. We built a fort big enough for the two of us. Us. I almost wanted to make this my new home, but I knew we had to keep moving tomorrow. Nice. We finished making it just in time. Zombies should be on the prowl soon, though. Now it was time to go to sleep, and Steve had an extra bed for me. Here you go, Bronzo. Gotta stay cozy in these rough times. Thanks, Steve. Let's get some rest. Good night. On day three, I woke up and Steve was gone. Steve, Steve, where are you? I walked outside and saw Steve fighting zombies. And right before my eyes, he was killed. No, Steve. Oh, you stupid zombies. You'll pay for this. I killed the zombies, but it was too late. Steve was gone. What's this? Steve's notebook? They must have the directions to the military base. Let's see here. Keep going north. Okay, uh, I think north is this way. I stumbled upon a group of zombies who were eating flesh. My best chance of survival was to sneak around them. Slow and steady. Unfortunately, I fell off the hill and made that stupid taking damage sound, which alerted the zombies to my location. Shoot, I better start running. There's too many of them. I outran the zombies and found a little cave to hide in until sunrise. On days four through five, I made it to the military base. Unfortunately, without Steve. Hello, I am a normal human, not a zombie, I swear. This army looking dude approached me. He must have been a general and he looked happy to see me. Ah, good to see another human, glad you're alive. Welcome to the team. Thanks, it's rough out there. I lost my friend Steve on the way here, but he told me about this place. I looked around to see the other team members. Uh, hi everyone, nice to meet you. One of the soldiers gave me some food. Thank you so much. I quickly ate, but I noticed one of the team members seemed like he didn't like me. Oh, see so you're the new guy, huh? Uh, hi, I'm Bronzo. Uh, what's your name? Connor, look Bongo, this place is not meant for people like you. You seem a little weak. If you wanna stick around you're gonna have to toughen up. Um, okay. Suddenly, the base was under attack. Zombies started swarming the area, and we quickly prepared to fight. Everybody, get your weapons. Attack. The battle was hard. There were so many of them. But after fighting the zombies, the general thanked me for helping and gave me a weapon. Thanks for helping us, Bronzo. You'll make good use of this. Wow, this is gonna come in handy. On day six, the general filled me in on how the zombie apocalypse began. It all started with this one scientist who was trying to save his daughter from a deadly disease. Oh wow, sounds like every other zombie apocalypse. Now what happened next? Instead of creating a cure, he made the first zombie. And worst of all, she infected him. That's brutal, death by daughter. I had to know the specifications of getting infected, so I asked the general if he knew. You're not infected, are you? You tell me now, I can end your misery. What? No, 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 uh, at least I don't think I am. <laughs> Just joshing with you. Oh, you only get infected if you're near them too long. It would be a zombie now if that were the case. Well, that's good to know. Hey, do you think I can settle down here? You know, son, you proved yourself earlier. 
So, I don't see why not. Thanks. I'll have to get more materials first. See you later. On days seven through nine, I decided it was time to go looking for resources to build my home. I'm gonna need some iron. I went mining so that I could make furnaces and tools. After working with the iron and making an entire iron tool set, I made it back to the mountains. Aw, cute little dog. I started to offer the dog some food, but then saw some bad guys running towards me. Give me your food. No way. The bad guys started attacking, so I fought back. The dog helped me fight the bad guys, so I decided to bring him along with me. Thanks for helping me, little guy. I looked to see if he had a name tag, and he didn't, so I decided to name him myself. Hmm. I'll name you Balto. I could tell Balto was feeling hungry, but all I had was some bones. So we went to go find some. Let's get you some food. Follow me, little guy. I found an entire village and took some food for us and then found a little spot to rest for the night. All right, Balto, let's get some rest. For days 10 through 12, we woke up to find that all the villagers had turned into zombies. Oh no, zombies everywhere. Balto, we have to leave now. We had no choice but to kill all the villagers who had now turned into zombies. Come on, Balto, attack anyone who gets near us and let's get out of here. We made our way out of the village and then spotted a cabin nearby. Maybe we should go inside and investigate. We entered the cabin and Balto immediately went to sniff a chest that was in the corner. What did you find, Balto? Let's open it. I opened the chest and found a collection of maps that someone made to point out the most zombie infested areas to stay away from. It looks like the areas in the Northwest are infested the most. I'm definitely taking these maps with me. I looked around to see if there was any more useful tools and I found some weapons. Ooh, a bat and some explosives. I took the weapons and maps with me and left the village. I then made it back to the base and showed the general what I had found. Sir, I found a collection of maps that could help us make a plan. By golly, that's tremendous. He looked at the maps and thanked me for the information I had given him. Thank you for this, Bronzo. This could help us strategize a good plan of attack. From the days of 13 to 16, I gathered some wood and stone so that I could begin building my base later on. I gathered a ton of wood probably enough to make an entire village. I explored a cave and mined some stone. I even found some iron along the way. I should make some armor just in case any zombies attack me. I gathered enough for a full armor set and an iron sword. I then heard a voice of someone crying somewhere deep in the cave. So I went to investigate what it was. Who could that be? Let's go find out. I approached the area where I heard the crying come from and saw nothing, just a dead end. That's strange. I could have sworn I heard something. Before I knew it, I was suddenly ambushed by dark zombies. Ah, more zombies. There were way too many zombies for me to handle. So my only hope was to escape. No, no, no. You're not getting a taste of me. Gotta go fast. From days 17 through 20, I began building my own little home near the military base walls. This spot should you just fine. I made sure my base had enough space for a chest room and a bedroom, as well as a living room. Wow, look at all this space. Balto even got a little spot to sleep. Comfy, right, buddy? Oh, okay. I stepped outside after admiring my handiwork to take a grand look around, but I was interrupted by Connor. You call that a base? Ha! <laughs> Looks like trash. The only trash thing here is your face. Why, yeah, yada. Connor and I were boiling with rage. We ended up fighting. Eat my fist, you hater. You're so weak, your punches barely hurt me. Back off or eat lead. Whoa, bro, way too far. What's wrong with you? You think I'm playing games? I'll do it. Connor was in so much fear, he looked like he was about to pee his pants. Haha, <laughs> tricked ya. It's empty, dummy. You should have seen your face. You looked like a little baby. Uh, I'm about out of this lame base. Now that Connor was gone, I could enjoy my new base in peace. On days 21 through 23, I decided to explore more of this apocalyptic world. Leaving Balto home is probably for the best. Hopefully I make it back in one piece. Along the way, I found an empty building with tons of free rations for grabs. So naturally, I went inside to get some loot. Look at all this food. And what's this, adrenaline? Ah, I'll save this for later. There were tons of ammo and weapons among the abandoned warehouse, and I wasn't gonna let it go to waste. Yeah, I'll be needing all of this and all this dynamite, all these Lay's potato chips. Yeah, I don't know 
when this Coke expired. One of the chests contained a sniper rifle. Long range shooting is gonna be great with this thing. Out of nowhere, zombies began flooding in. There were so many of them. I thought it was over for me until some mysterious man, jewel wielding katana swords came in and sliced up all the zombies. Whoa, hey, who are you? He didn't waste any time. And after he killed the last zombie, he left before I could get any answers. Oh, that was a close call. Was that guy friendly? Was I just in the right place at the right time? I decided to keep moving and ran into a group of mindless zombies. It was a perfect opportunity to try out the explosives. Hey, Dodo Brains, eat this. Whoa, that was awesome. I kept moving before the explosion attracted more zombies. From days 24 through 28, I found a new military base. Hello? Is anyone still alive here? From first glance, the entire place looked abandoned. I guess I should take what I can find. Hopeful to find something useful, I searched through the chests that were left behind and found some food. Oh, thank goodness, I could save this for later. I walked into the back when suddenly I was faced with zombies. What the? Were you monsters waiting for me? I used the adrenaline I got earlier in order to gain some strength and speed to fight the zombies. Ooh, this zombie is powerful. I gotta use this gun. But I realized the zombie was a Hydra zombie, meaning if I killed it, another one would replace it. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? I guess run. I had gotten away, but for how long? I started wondering how these zombies were getting enhanced powers. Is the mad scientist still out there? No, no, he can't be. Enough thinking about that. Let's find a place to stay. I found a waterfall with a cave behind it and made a campfire and I had a snack before heading off to bed. Hopefully, I wouldn't be dead in the morning. On days 29 to 33, I decided it was time to head back to the base. I don't think I should be out here any longer. As soon as I arrived back, the general was very happy to see me and told me some news. Ronzo, good to know you're alive and well. The base was under attack while you were gone. Oh no. Is everyone okay? We lost some members. And I thought you might have died. Connor stepped into the conversation. This time, I made sure to keep my cool in case he said another dumb thing. You should have been here, Bronzo. You can't keep leaving whatever you want. Either stay and protect the base or leave for good. Although I despised Connor, he had made a good point. I had left when the base needed me the most, so I couldn't really argue with him. All right, Connor. Sorry about that. I brought out some of the food I had found and gave it out to everybody. Here are some canned goods and other snacks I found in my travels. Thank you. You did the right thing by bringing us this. We're running out of supplies. No need to worry. I will continue looking for more survivors who will serve the team, as well as bring more supplies. Just make sure that they're trustworthy people. Will do. I went looking for Balto, and there he was, excited to see me. Balto, I missed you, buddy. Here, have a treat. After settling in, I decided I needed to expand the base by building a watchtower, and then decided to start a farm. So I gave Balto some seeds, and we started planting some crops. Nice job, Balto. Our farm looks great. On days 34 through 37, I went mining for iron and lots of it. This will last me a lifetime at this rate. While excavating, I found precious diamonds and had enough to craft a sword, axe, and pickaxe, as well as some shiny boots. I bet these zombies don't want any action now. I returned back to the base to begin the construction of my iron fence. Once I set this up, my base will be safe and fortified. I used the iron I had collected to make iron bars and began working on my wall. I had it run around my entire base, and luckily iron bars work like fences so no one can jump over it. Look at that. Now that's what I call secure. With the remaining iron, I created an iron golem to protect the base even further. Nothing can penetrate these walls. I was wrong. Somehow, there were mutated flying zombies attacking the base at night. I thought my walls would protect me. I didn't expect this. I climbed up to the top of my tower and took out my gun and assisted the snipers, firing directly at the flying undead. Eat ledge, you freaks. We managed to rid some of the zombies and the rest flew away and don't think about coming back i met up with the general back at the base and he was impressed with my sniping skills great shooting out there soldier thank you sir i try my best the general then gave me some military garb as a reward here take this armor you'll need it connor came up to complain about my efforts but i decided to ignore him why does he get that armor i fought those zombies with my fists on days 38 through 40 i left the base and went looking for more survivors i hope there are more people alive out there as i walked through the forest i found a cabin and decided to do some searching hmm i wonder if someone lives here i approached the cabin and knocked on the door in case someone was inside hello who are you oh hi i'm bronzo i'm with a military base looking for survivors 
Cruz saw your cabin and thought I would stop by. The guy greeted me and then told me he was with other survivors. Hi, I'm Kevin. My family's upstairs sleeping, so we should keep our voices down. Come inside. I stepped into the cozy cabin, and Kevin offered me food and shelter for the night. Come on in and make yourself at home. Thank you, Kevin. I then asked Kevin about his family. We're doing all right. I'm gonna go get some campfire wood to make some soup. You must be freezing. I heard Kevin say his family was upstairs, so I went to investigate. As soon as I went up there, I saw a bunch of zombies locked in a cage. Are these his family members? What the heck? I quickly went downstairs to tell Kevin the bad news about his family. Kevin, your family turned into to zombies! Kevin appeared very sad. What he was about to tell me wasn't good. I know, it's really bad. But I can't bear the thought of losing them, so I keep them there locked up, hoping I can save their life one day. Kevin was in a real bad situation, so I had to be honest with him. You can't keep them there. If you do, you might catch the infection and turn into a zombie too. He was not ready to let go of his family, and he told me he was willing to face the consequences. I don't care. I'd rather die with them. I'm sorry about your family, Kevin. I hope you choose to live. I must go now. I couldn't stay with Kevin anymore. Although it was a very sad encounter, I couldn't risk staying with him and turning into a zombie myself. I had to look for other survivors, so I left. From days 41 through 49, I got back to the base, and Balto was so excited to see me. Who's a good boy? That's right, Balto, you are! It was about time I took Balto on a hunting trip. He had to learn the ways of the trade, after all. Get ready, boy. We're going on an adventure. Before leaving, I made sure I was prepared. I grabbed a few of my guns and some ammo. This is enough to take down any type of wild animal. On our way, we made it to a field and found some pigs and cows. Balto immediately attacked them. There were also some chickens, and I used my guns to shoot them down. Great job, boy. We got tons of food now. We made a fireplace and cooked the abundance of food. It was nice just being able to camp with Balto. Our good times were ruined when a horde of zombie animals approached us. Let's fight them together. These things are monsters. I used my guns and sword to kill the zombies, and eventually, Balto and I were able to take out all of them. Good boy. Now, let's get out of here. I took Balto back to the base and gave him some meat for his hard work. All right, boy, I gotta keep exploring, looking for other survivors, but I'll be back soon. On days 50 through 53, I traveled across an icy town full of frozen zombies. I guess it's time to break the ice. <laughs> Bazinga! I noticed these zombies were harder to kill, so I needed to be well equipped. This is the perfect time to test out my new weapons. I took out my gun and started blasting those zombies. One of the zombies had acrobatic powers though. And when it hit me, it gave me slowness. I gotta go hide somewhere. After killing all the zombies, I spotted an igloo at the top of the hill and went there to hide. Inside of the igloo was an old man who was fishing. Oh, hi there. Sorry to bother you, but zombies were attacking me. I need a place to hide. Ah, right, come inside. It's crazy out there. Have you eaten? You look like skin and bones. No, I haven't. I've been fighting zombies for days now. Well, you're in luck. I'm making my special fish fillet. Here, have some. It's my secret recipe. While I ate the food he gave me, I started to wonder how this old man had survived all these days in this zombie apocalypse. Thank you for sharing. So, how have you been surviving here? Ah, well, you see, I have a special gas mask that has helped me survive the treacherous conditions we're in. The old man pulled out the mask and showed it to me. Wow, that's a neat tool you got there. I wish I had one. I've almost died several times now. You know what? You'll need this more than I do. Here, take it with you. I was very surprised to see this old man give me his survival mask. I then gave him a gift in return. Thank you so much for this. Here, take this iron pickaxe. It'll help you. I must continue on my journey now. Goodbye, and thank you again. As I left the igloo, I remembered Kevin with the zombie family and thought it would be a good idea to give the mask to him so he could spend some more time with his zombie loved ones. From days 54 through 55, I stumbled upon the cabin from earlier. I wonder if Kevin is here. I better check it out. Kevin? Kevin? Are you here? Maybe he's upstairs. I climbed up the ladder and the cages were open. Kevin and his entire zombified family were gone. No, 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 this can't be good. I rushed out of Kevin's cabin and ran towards the military base. When I got there, it was under attack by a horde of zombies. Backup is here, everyone. I got this. I used my guns to the best of my ability. There were zombies surrounding every nook and cranny of the base. Ugh, these zombies aren't letting up. I saw the general fighting when suddenly he was mauled to death by a zombie! I tried to save him, but it was too late! General, no! 
<sighs> Die, you stupid zombies! The battle was over, but the war had just begun. Just then, Connor walked up to me. You're all right, I guess, Bronzo. But let's get one thing straight. I'm the new general around here. You know what, Connor? I agree with you. Huh? I agreed with Connor because he knew everyone here much better than I did. And he was closer with the general. Well, thanks, I guess. Yes, I'm the best. On days 56 through 58, I helped fix the military base after the zombie attack from the other day. These zombies destroyed everything. I was stacking some wood when a small group of survivors showed up. Hey, we are not infected and we need shelter. Connor quickly approached me in disgust. I knew he was probably going to complain about them. We shouldn't trust these guys. You never know with zombies these days. They could be disguised as humans or something. It doesn't work like that, Connor. To avoid any conflict with the other members, I decided to offer them some shelter at my own base. No need to worry, you guys. Follow me. I'll help you get settled in. Balto and I then spent some time building a basement for the survivors. We added some beds, torches, and plenty of spaces for the survivors to keep warm. You guys can stay here as long as you want. This place is safe. Thank you. I noticed that the base was running out of food, which meant it was time to go looking for more. I'll be back. Stay in here, everybody. Zombies are getting crazier by the minute. I took Balto with me to go hunting for some food. Look, some sheep. Get them, Balto. We didn't kill all the sheep, and Balto took the rest of them back to the base. Oh, what a nice little mushroom. When I saw the mushrooms, I immediately came up with a brilliant idea. If I went to find the mushroom island, I could get the special cow, the mushroom, for eternal mushroom soup. On my way to the mushroom island, I thought it would be clever to stop by a swamp and find some slime. Oh, I see some. The slime jumped towards me and then started to attack. I pulled out my gun and started blasting those slime into pieces. Take this, Slimo. If I combine the string with the slime balls, I can make a few leads. Well, this came in handy after all. I took the leads with me and headed towards the island. From days 59 through 62, I built a boat and then set sail. It was time to begin exploring what this world had to offer. Wow, it's really peaceful out here. As I sailed across the ocean, I found an island with a building on it. I wonder what could be inside of this place. Maybe I should look. I docked my sailboat and went to do some searching. I didn't waste any time and went straight inside the building. It looked abandoned. Huh, I don't see any zombies. This place looks pretty empty though. Suddenly, I was ambushed by a tough looking woman with jewel katana. I tried talking to them, but there was no time. They were attacking me, and they were way too good at fighting. I surrender! Uncle! Uncle! Who are you, and what are you doing here? I'm Bronzo. Who are you? She didn't tell me her name. Instead, she looked down on me as I crouched in fear. I realized she was incredibly powerful, so I had to be careful. Wait, I recognize you. You're the ninja from earlier. Look, you helped me once. Maybe you can help me again. I came from a military base. We fought hundreds of zombies, and we could use someone as strong as you in this apocalypse. She walked past me and then declined my offer. No, thank you. I would rather be alone. So what are you looking for out here? I'm searching for the mushroom islands. Once I get there, I will find the mushrooms that will help me feed everyone at my base. I see. Well, I won't work with you at your military base, but perhaps I could help you find this island. I know my way around pretty well. Really? Awesome! I mean, that's cool. We both walked back to the boats and found some drowned waiting for us. I'll help you fight them. As we fought the drowned zombies together, I started getting distracted by how cool and powerful she was. She'd slashed the last one while I stared in awe. Easy, that's the last one of them. What are you doing just standing there? Come on, we don't have time to waste. I started to have a crush on her, but I needed to stay focused on our mission. Oh, um, nothing. You're just really, uh... Let's go. Oh, okay. We got on the boats and sailed away together. On day 63 through 66, we made it to a beach and my friend thought this would be a nice place to make a stop. We can rest here. I agree, let's stay here for the night. I had a campfire from earlier, so I placed it down in between us. What would you like to make for dinner? Let's have some fish. Here, take this. Deal, we made a wonderful team. We were fishing and cooking together. It was a lovely time. This is really tasty. We shared some heartwarming stories about our life before the apocalypse. Wow, I can't believe you've been through all that. No wonder you're so strong. Well, I've definitely sharpened my skills during this time. Suddenly, we saw zombies. I guess the smell of the cooked fish attracted them. And now, the zombies were on full attack mode. Ugh, give me a break. Die, you stupid undead. Die again, I mean. 
seen. After shooting quite a few of them in the forest, I turned back around and saw her fighting more zombies. I felt frozen. I watched as she cut through them like butter. She was the best and most beautiful fighter I had ever seen in my life. Wow. You need to stop freezing up every time we fight zombies. You daydreaming or something? Oh, sorry. I, I, um... It's fine. We don't have time for this. Pack up. We have to leave now. We picked up all the cooked fish we had left and got on our boats, sailing away to find the Mushroom Island. We made it to the Mushroom Islands on day 67 through 70. We did it! I'll be able to save everyone at my base from starvation! We got out of our boats, and I ran up to all the mushrooms on the island. I was so excited that we actually found it. You're gonna feed so many people, little guy. I turned back to the raider to thank her for everything she had done for me. But when I looked back, she was gone. Wait, where'd you go? Oh, she couldn't have gotten far. Even her boat was gone. I could only assume she left because her task with me was over. I guess she doesn't feel the same way about me. And it wasn't meant to be. Never mind. I went back to the mushrooms and used a lead to bring one of them back to the boat. All right, get on. The mushroom got on the boat and I hopped on as well. So we started our voyage back to the base. On day 71 through 74, I headed back to the base and brought back the mushroom I found from the island. Hey everyone, I'm back and I brought something special. We're eating good tonight. I then taught the other survivors how to use the mushroom. Connor seemed really impressed while I was giving mushroom lessons. Clever little recipe you got there. It's really delicious too. You want to try some? I gave Connor some of the soup and he seemed to have loved it. I think he was starting to warm up to me. After we enjoyed our soup, I headed back to work. I went mining so that I could build leggings and a helmet out of diamonds. I got enough and made almost an entire armor set. And now I was ready to take on anything. When I was returning back to the base on days 75 to 78, something felt amiss. Hey, wait, where is everyone? That's when I heard the gunfire coming from my base, followed by a loud roar from something much bigger than you and I. That can't be good. I rushed over to my base to find that Balto and Connor were already engaging a giant mutant zombie. I fought as hard as I could, but I couldn't be in two places at once. I couldn't save everyone. And after a flurry of shots from my gun, the giant mutant zombie was slain. We did it! But at what cost? We lost so many soldiers. These things happen sometimes. You and the other survivors get some rest at the military base. We'll take care of everything tomorrow. Thank you. I then headed back to the base to sleep for the night. Although, I wouldn't end up getting much sleep. On day 79 through 84, I noticed more survivors started showing up. So I decided to build another large building to expand my base. And they thanked me for giving them a place to stay. I then noticed that Balto was acting very strange. Usually when I called to him, he would come up to me in excitement. But this time, he stayed still and growled. Then Balto suddenly turned into a zombie wolf. Balto, no! How did this happen? I knew that what I was about to do was going to haunt me forever. I had to kill Balto. If I didn't, he could kill me. So I had no other choice. Balto! I dug up a little grave for Balto, close to the base, and sang Bob Marley's Three Little Birds in memory of my best friend. Every little thing is gonna be all right. On days 85 through 89, Connor and I finally shared a heartwarming moment together. I was mourning, and he was there for me. I'm really sorry for your loss, Bronzo. I know Balto was your best friend. For the first time, I noticed Connor actually cared about me. Thanks, Connor. It's just really hard, you know? All of a sudden, everyone you love turns into a zombie, or just leaves in plain sight. Don't give up now. You are strong, Bronzo. I don't know anymore, Connor. When will this apocalypse ever end? I wondered if my life would ever be normal again. I didn't want to keep fighting zombies anymore. I know there's a scientist out there somewhere who turned everyone into zombies. You should go find him and put a stop to all of this. You think so? Of course. What do you have to lose? He must still be alive. Go get him. Connor had made a good point. I had already survived several battles, so finding the scientist was the next thing I should do before I died. I'm rooting for you, Bronzo. Connor and I had a chest bump, and I left on my new journey thanks to the support he had given me. On days 90 through 93, I made it to some creepy woods. There were a bunch of dead trees surrounding the area. I have a bad feeling about this. It was nightfall and there was nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. 
What the heck should I do? Out of nowhere, from every side around me, all kinds of zombies ambushed me. Some of them were super fast, and others could spit acid. You think I can't handle all of you? I got plenty of ammo and explosives. Just try me. The zombies were not letting up. There were too many of them, but I couldn't give up now. I'll keep going until my last breath. For a moment, I thought it was over. I hadn't even made it to day 100. No, this can't be it. I have so much life left to live. Then right before my eyes, the sun rose up. It was the greatest sight I had ever seen. Yes, glorious sun, you've saved me. With the beaming rays of the sun, all of the zombies burned to a crisp. I was saved. On days 94 through 96, I continued walking through the woods and found a large house on the side of a mountain. I decided to go investigate this house, and as soon as I entered it, it smelled like a bunch of weird chemicals. I ignored the smell and kept looking around. Then I saw the biggest clue of all time when I walked upstairs. A laboratory! This must be where the scientist created the first zombie, which started the apocalypse! He could be anywhere. I found a diary inside one of the chests. Well, well, well. This must be good. As I read, I I found out the scientist's daughter had turned into a zombie and he wasn't able to cure her. So instead, he gave the world eternal life by spreading the disease he created. This is terrible. How could he do something like this? I wanted to keep reading, but I knew I must keep looking for more clues. Well, he either used to live here or still does. And who do you think you are reading my diary? Ah! It's you! You're the scientist! Yes, it is I, the creator of all evil. <laughs> Why'd you do it? Why can't you put a stop to all of this? I was surprised he wasn't a zombie himself. He looked like a normal old man, except he definitely had gone mad. This world is a terrible place. I'm here to make it slightly more interesting. You've ruined everyone's lives. Why are you still normal? Don't worry, my little a friend. Soon I will become a zombie just like you and everyone else and rule this world. He'd gone crazy. He started getting closer to me. So I pulled out my sword. No, you're not. I'm ending this now. Kill him, my precious creatures. I wanted to initiate a fight, but he started unleashing zombies that came to attack me. The scientist managed to get away while I was in battle. You're not getting away with this. I'm going to find you and kill you. I killed all the zombies and looked around. The scientist had vanished and now I had to go find him again. From days 97 through 98, I began heading back home. It's a long way back from here. I gotta keep moving. On my journey back, I noticed I began feeling sick. Something wasn't right. Probably just some allergies. I finally got back to the base, and I've never felt so happy to be back. Ugh, it's nice to be alive in one piece. Connor ran up to me, asking if I found the scientist. I had to tell him the truth. Yes, I found him, but he got away. He has plans to take over the world with his zombie army. He's gone mad. You know what that means. There's only one thing left to do. Yeah, the only thing you can do. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment what video you want to see me do next. Yes, but no. I have to find the head of the military and devise a plan to kill the scientist. Oh. I gotta go. See ya. As Connor left, I noticed my hand turned green. I was becoming a zombie. It was day 99, and I didn't know what to do. I was changing, and I didn't think it was safe to stay with the remaining survivors here. I thought about leaving when I saw something in the distance, so I decided to investigate. It's the scientist. He must have followed me here. Luckily, he was camping out and didn't notice me spying on him. I have to warn the others. I told everyone at the base of the upcoming conflict. They wanted to help, but there was no reasons for them to stay. One, it's not safe. Two, they might turn into zombies as well, and not much help anyway. All right, Bronzo. We'll go find the others and stay with them, I guess. They left, and it was time for me to prepare for war. Finally, it was day 100, and time for me to get as many weapons as possible for this final battle against the scientist. Do you really think those weapons will save you against me? The scientist was ready to take me down or have me join him. I cannot let you win. This world needs to be rid of zombies, not... Ugh. Ugh. I could feel myself changing, turning into the very thing I swore to destroy, a full-fledged zombie. Good, you have decided to join my army. Now come, let's convert more into zombies. No, never. 
I could feel that I still had my consciousness. Even though I was a zombie, my willpower was strong enough to deny the scientist's request. You dare disobey your king? In his anger, he transformed into a zombie king! Prepare to die. We fought it out. I used my guns, and the scientist used his zombie science magic to summon other zombies from the ground, and even <laughs> used a whirlwind ability that caused great destruction. <laughs> You're too powerful! So, you submit? I'd rather die! I thought all hope was lost, until I looked over to the mountains and saw Connor. With the president? I knew what they were doing here. It was time for this all to end. Do, Do it! it. Connor shook his head, and the president pulled out a detonator. The next thing I knew was that a nuke was falling towards me and the scientist. No! 